I was cast as a son in Slither on the Roof uh, in the sixth grade play. Um, and I still remember my choreography. At three, I started Hebrew school. At 10, I learned a trade. I hear they picked a bride for me. I hope up down she's pretty. Turn the sons, the sons. Tradition. Hey, Lynn, how are you? How are you? Good. We enter laughing. So? Now, this is our, this is my little abode. And this gorgeous. is where I work. You, you got some, Hirschfeld you've got stuff. quite a Hirschfeld collection here. Yeah. Oh, this is the Fiddler in Japan. That is one of my favorite stories of yours, of the intermission at Fiddler in Japan. Oh, yeah, well, well the producer said, do they understand this show in America? I said, why do you ask? He says, because it's so Japanese. <laughs> that sums up everything yeah. about the universal yeah, appeal yeah. of Fiddler. How did you decide what would be musicalized by Bach and Harnick and what Well, we was? decided among the three of us, we talked about it. You know, they came up with notions for songs. Despite the fact that we were all successful, of all of the shows I've done, that was the most difficult to get a producer for was Fiddler. I remember one producer that says, you know, I read it and I really like it. I like it very much. But what am I going to do for an audience once I run out of Hadassah benefits? <laughs> In order to understand the show, since I clearly did not understand it when the guys offered it to me, Sheldon gave me a book on shtetls. So I signed on to do the show. The budget was $250,000 for a musical, which today you can't do a one-man show off-Broadway. The, the guys asked me to direct it originally, and I said, I, I don't, I'm the wrong guy. Uh, and we talked, and I think, uh, Maybe I, uh, I said Jerry Robbins should do it. And my thinking was very clear. I thought it had to have universality. 